Welcome to The Coaches Show. I'm Hannah Wolfart, joined by head women's basketball coach Megan Jebbia. Coach, let's start by recapping non-conference play. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was a fun non-conference. I think it was our best non-conference since my first season. Uh, we went 7-4, and four, which was nice. Um, with an experienced team, you expect to, to hopefully do better than we have in the past. And I think our seniors really rose to the challenge. And winning a couple games on the road, which is always hard to do against higher level opponents in our Tulsa uh, victory. And we came back and played LaSalle at home, which was nice. And they beat us at their place last year. So it was kind of nice to get a little revenge on them. Um, and then, you know, we had a couple hiccups here and there with, with the Delaware game. And George Mason's a really good team this year. So we struggled at their place a little bit. But we came back, um, we won some, some of the mid-major teams that we played, like the Denver's, Youngstown's, UMBC's. Um, and then, you know, we, we decided that we would make the, the toughest competition for last and put Penn State on our schedule, and they were nice enough to come down here and play us on our home court. And, you know, it was great to, to get that victory in overtime, which was um, obviously not expected by me or by the team, but we knew that we could compete because we competed with them last year. And just to be able to pull off that win and have Kate Vaughn come in and do what she did as a senior was awesome. So you talk a little bit about the scheduling process for non-conference play. What goes into that? Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously, you want to schedule well um, in case you get to the tournament. You want a good uh, RPI. Um, so you want to play teams that have done well. And I think we did a, a good job of that. We didn't make the schedule too hard this year. I have done that in the past where I've scheduled up, and it's been rough for us. Um, but we have a couple of really good teams on the schedule that have done well so far this year. And we want to do hometown visits. So this year we went to Tulsa to take, to take Kate Bond home, back to Oklahoma. And we went to Vermont um, to take Emily Kiniston back. So it was nice to be able to do that for them as seniors. And last year you guys traveled to Michigan for Maria, right? We sure did. What is the importance of making those scheduling changes, you know, in traveling to far places like Oklahoma so that these people and seniors now this year, Kate Bond could play in front of her hometown? Yeah, I, I think it's important because, at least I know with Oklahoma, Kate's family was like, I want to prove to them that they, they could see Oklahoma in a different way. You know, I don't want them to think that we're all hicks out here and all that <laughs> stuff. So we did that. Um, but I think it's important for them to play in front of their home crowd. I mean, they don't ever get a chance to do that. Uh, with our conference schedule and, and stuff, there's, no, there's nothing that takes them back that way. It's nice for their family that they don't have to fly out here all the time. And the Kinnisons come a lot, um, so it was nice for them to be able to see her play two games uh, 20 minutes away. So um, it's important and it's nice because the families usually have the team over uh, for dinner or some type of meal and we just kind of relax and hang out. It's just good bonding time for the girls. So you talked a little bit about Penn State. That was a huge victory for you guys mm -hmm. and your last game before conference play began. Can you talk a little bit about the transition from going from Penn State, your last conference game, into conference play and then facing Bucknell, which is one of your rival teams? Yeah, um, I was concerned. I mean, I was happy, obviously, that we won, but I was concerned because it can go one of two ways. You know, you could be on this high and think that you're better than you are, um, and then you, you enter into a Bucknell and then you just don't show up, or it could, it could give you the momentum you need to head into conference. I definitely think it gave us the momentum that we needed. This group is very grounded, uh, which I like. I don't have to worry about them getting big heads or anything. We, we, we have a tendency to pop those big heads in practice, so <laughs> we're okay there. But um, yeah, I mean, it was nice that I think it helped that it was Bucknell because I think our players see Bucknell as the rival in our conference, for us anyway. So I knew they'd be focused and ready um, to, to go through the scout and figure out what we needed to do to beat them. And, you know, having played all these bigger, bigger schools, and Bucknell's a huge team, size, just size-wise, that we were able to handle that because we had seen teams like that at that point, you know, through our non-conference. Both of those games are huge, Penn State and Bucknell. What do you, or is there one that's more important to you guys win-wise or more exciting for you guys? Because you have Penn State, you beat a Big Ten team mm -hmm. in overtime that was really exciting, but Bucknell is conference play, so it counts for the tournament and stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I would like to say that Bucknell's more important just because it's our conference and, you know, if you want, you're vying for, you know, the top seed or whatever you're trying to fight for to get home, home court advantage. Um, but I will say, you know, when you go, if you get to the tournament, which is obviously our goal this year, um, then you beating a Penn State shows well for you to the committee. And, you know, they, they look at that as a top 100 win, which is important when they're doing their seating down the road. Now, you did talk about how the girls are grounded. They're, they don't mm -hmm. have big heads, even though they keep winning. Yeah. With Bucknell starting your conference play and getting that huge victory, does that boost confidence at all, though, going into the rest of conference play? Do you think that changes things or matters at all? I think it has to. I think we've competed well with Bucknell the last couple of years, even when we weren't as good. And I think they know that they could beat them. It was just a matter of 
you know, showing up and doing it. And we had a, a big lead on them, and we kind of let them kind of chip away and chip away in the fourth quarter. We missed some free throws down the stretch in the game, which kind of caused the lead to shrink a little bit for us. But for the most part, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a confidence booster for us. You know, they're they're three and one right now, so they're doing well. And, um, you know, you want to at least make sure you split with a team like that headed into the second half of the conference season. Now, from your perspective, can you talk a little bit about last season, you guys facing Bucknell, very close matchups. Yeah. Bucknell did come away with the last W, though. Mm -hmm. And now you guys are a different team, and we're seeing that on the court. You guys are playing different. You're yeah. stronger in the mm -hmm. second half. You're finishing better. Mm -hmm. How does that feel from your perspective? Oh, such a relief. <laughs> We've been working. This team has been a work in progress for three years. This is our third year. And I think it's the most rewarding uh, team I've been a part of here because it's we, we've started from the bottom. I mean, we started from ground zero uh, and worked our way up. And I'm just so proud to see that, that they've figured it out. You know, they've they had the confidence. They have the experience. You know, they know what we're supposed to be doing at both ends of the floor. So it's not as hard and practice is, is quicker and smoother, which is nice. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to be a part and to be where we are and to know that we really have built from from bottom. Thanks for tuning in to The Coaches Show, and thanks to Coach Megan Jebbia for joining me today. If you want to know more about AU women's basketball, go to auegles.com or follow the team on Twitter, au underscore wbasketball.